Chelsea Hare from Resource Depot. I'm the Director of Education and Artist Relations. And today, we're going to make a toilet paper tube, cardboard tube sculpture. But before we start making, I wanted to talk with you a little bit. So this is a paper towel tube. These are toilet paper tubes. And this is products that we use every day. Um, and they are made, paper and cardboard are made from trees. Uh, did you know that it takes 10 to 20 years for a tree to become fully grown, enough for them to harvest to make paper products out of? It's a pretty long time. I bet some of you might be 10 years old. So, um, if we replaced all of our toilet paper and paper towels with a 100% recycled paper product, we would save 423,900 trees. It's a lot of trees, right? And you do know trees help provide us with oxygen and clean air. Not to mention they're beautiful and they help keep the heat down. So it's really important that we try and reuse. Um, also, around 17 billion toilet paper tubes and paper towel tubes get thrown away every year. And these are a recyclable, reusable product. And 17 billion is enough to fill the entire Empire State Building twice. That's crazy, right? So it's really important that we start to rethink the products that we buy by buying recycled material instead of virgin material. And virgin material means uh, that it's directly from the tree. It's never been used before. Recycled, and I'm not talking about recycled tissue paper. That would be icky. I'm just talking about recycled paper products. If we just switch to recycled paper products, we would save so much trees and so much water. So think about the products that you use and remember that we can reuse. So today we're going to use toilet paper tubes, some paint or markers, whatever you have at home, some regular old glue, scissors, and clothespins. If you don't have clothespins, you can use a binder clip or a paper clip. Either will work. And we're going to construct our own paper sculpture. So, the first things you need are either your paper towel roll or your toilet paper tubes. If they have uh, residual paper on them, make sure you go ahead and peel that off. As much as you can. And if you're using toilet paper tubes, I would recommend at least using two. You can use more if you like. And I'm gonna to choose to paint mine, uh, but you're welcome to color with markers. Uh, if you choose to paint them, we're gonna paint our outside of our tube first. We're gonna cut it up and then we're actually gonna paint the inside as well because you do see it on this. So first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna decorate our tubes with whatever colors, whether it's with markers or with paint. We're gonna choose paint. If you're using paint, Make sure you get something to put down while you're painting. I'm gonna use this file folder so that that way we don't get paint wherever we're working. We wanna be nice and clean when we're working, right? So you could use a piece of newspaper, some scrap paper, um, some wax paper even. So I got my paint palette. I'm gonna use a silver paint. The last time I used a gold paint. This time we're gonna use a silver paint. You could even use multiple colors if you want. I like the one color because I think it keeps it really simple. And if you've never made a sculpture before, the difference between a painting and a sculpture is that this is three-dimensional, right? You can walk all the way around it and it looks different. Many artists make sculptures. And some artists that you could look up that maybe make something similar to this would be Tony Craig or David Smith or Tony Rosenthal has some pieces that are sort of similar to this. So you could look those up uh, in my comments, uh, maybe, or in my description. I'll leave some links so you can look those artists up, inspire you before you start to make. 
All right, so we're gonna go ahead and paint our tubes. I'm gonna go with my paper towel tube. And you don't want your paint to be too thick because then it'll take forever to dry. You can always come back in and do a second coat. All right, so we're gonna let that dry uh, and we're gonna make sure we wash our brush out really well. We're gonna cover our paint because we're gonna use it again once this is dry and we'll be back. Now that your toilet paper tube is nice and dry, it's not cool to the touch anymore, uh, we're gonna go ahead and cut it up. And you can do a second coat if you'd like. So we're gonna take our scissors and your tube's gonna kind of smush a little bit in this process. Um, but you can just kind of push it back after you're finished cutting. So we're going to do maybe about half an inch. And we're going to try and keep it even. So I'm just going to cut it up. It's not exactly even, that's okay. make them thicker or thinner. You don't want them to be too thin because you want to have surface area that you can put the glue on and attach them. Remember, you could use as many tubes as you like and make this as big as you would like it to be. I'm just using one this time. As you can see, cutting them has made them all flat. So we're just gonna go back in and round them back out a little bit. Now, uh, you could go ahead and start attaching them just like this, uh, but this time I am going to paint the inside because you see it. If you don't wanna do that, you don't have to. All right, we're just gonna let those dry. Uh, pretty sure we're done with our paint, so I am going to make sure I clean my brush and wash my palette off, get things nice and clean. We're gonna let those dry. All right, now that the inside is all dry and the outside is all dry, we're gonna do the fun part. We're gonna assemble our sculpture. So with this piece, you can see things are stacked, they're folded in and on each other. The important part to making a sculpture that's gonna stand upright so that you can see it from all sides is making sure you develop a strong base so that it doesn't topple over. So that's what we're gonna work on first. You can use some simple uh, white glue. If you have something like tacky glue that's stronger, you're welcome to use that. I'm going to keep this down in case glue gets everywhere. So I'm going to start with a piece that's laying down like this. And then I'm going to have another piece maybe sit inside of it. So I'm just going to kind of put some glue on the side here. So that those hit. And something like that. sides a little and the glue will dry clear but you still don't want to have a bunch of drips of glue everywhere just like that and at this point it's really just about playing around and seeing what you can get and one thing I recommend doing is maybe take your clothes pin your paper clip or your binder clip and start to glue some together so 
and kind of glue them together and then you can sort of use this to hold them in place like that and start to glue things together. You can even, this works on getting the top pieces glued together. And the nice thing about this metallic paint is that you're starting to disguise what it is you're making from. So if you've ever gone to like a theme park or something and there's all of these rocks and boulders and marble columns, but the thing is they're not made out of, of stone or marble. Uh, they're probably foam or um, different materials that are just made to look like that. It's a facade, right? So it takes something that's not very expensive and makes it look way different. It's a disguise. A lot of making or a lot of art making is like that. Sometimes you're disguising, you're tricking your viewer. So by using this metallic paint, maybe they might think it's metal, who knows? So we're working to hold them together like this. So it's kind of like you're making a bunch of separate pieces that we're gonna to attach together. But we're gonna be thinking about how they might all work. And I, I like putting them on the inside too, like this. So you sort of just playing around like that. Just gonna put some glue on there. There's no wrong or right way to do this. to take a look at those artists that I mentioned. Take a look at Tony Craig and David Smith and Tony Rosenthal and try and get an idea of some different things that you can maybe emulate. It's always good to look at what other people are doing, not to copy, but to be inspired. Hmm, let's think, let's think. So go ahead and make another layer on this this part. So I have some things that are sort of working to attach to each other, and then I have some loose ones still. I'm going to actually let these dry a little bit, and then we'll start to assemble and uh, make our sculpture a full piece. Now that everything is mostly dry, we're going to unclip it. We're going to work on putting everything together. And still might need to do some clipping as we assemble. So remember, so this could be a base, this foursome here, or it could become a vertical part like that. I'm leaning towards these pieces becoming the base. Maybe I'll do like a little seven type shape. And once you get this assembled, you may just have to let it sit for a minute until it dries and then you'll be able to move it around. So I'm going to glue those together. Have this be my base. Maybe it's kind of just like I said before, like playing around figuring how things connect. You can decide if you want it to be something wide, something really tall. It's kind of all about balance. Visual balance and actual balance. 
visual balance is like if something looks too heavy on one side, you can move things around. Actual balance is making sure it doesn't fall over. And so right now these are all going this way. Maybe this one is going to go the opposite direction. Maybe. I wonder. I think I can do that. I think I can. So if this is the case, I'm actually not going to use the clothespin. I'm going to use a paper clip because it's a little bit lighter. I'm going to put some glue on here. putting some weight on it. So I'm actually gonna take my clothespin and hold this piece that I glued before. Make sure that stays. Like that. I think that's looking pretty good. Now I need to connect I have this piece and this, so I need to make sure they connect. give the illusion that it could fall, but we don't want to actually have it fall. So that's pretty good. Everything is glued in some way or another. I'm going to make sure everything has contact. Make sure it's not going to stick to where you have it sitting. All right, and we're going to leave that for about uh, five or ten minutes to dry, and then uh, we'll see how it looks. Okay, now that our piece is completely dry, we're going to carefully take off all of our little holding points. Can you stand up here? And that is our finished toilet paper tube sculpture. Definitely looks like a lot more than just toilet paper tubes. And you can make this as big or as small as you would like it. You just have a lot of fun and um, enjoy yourself. Well, that was fun, wasn't it? Now imagine all the other stuff that you can do with the same material. Different ways to use and create, right? Thank you for making with us today. And if you like what we do, make sure you go to our website at www.resourcedepot.org. You can also check us out on Facebook and Instagram and Twitter. And a big thank you to our funders Prime Time and Children's Services Council. Thank you so much. Make sure you make today. Bye.